Despite the predictions from economics, uh, economists rather, that retail sales would go up in February, the Commerce Department has reported retail sales dropped 0.1% in February, representing the first time since April of 2012 that retail sales have declined for three straight months. Consumer spending, which accounts for more than two-thirds of U.S. economic activity, slowed for the first two months of the year after accelerating at a 3.8% annualized rate in the fourth quarter of 2017. Here to discuss in detail about retail is Melissa Armo, the founder of Stockswoosh. Uh, Melissa, thank you so much for joining. Uh, you know, we know that after the holidays, uh, generally consumer spending goes down. Uh, we, we, we get that. But given that paychecks are growing for workers, and there's lots of jobs. We have still have a 4.1% unemployment rate. Uh, 313,000 new jobs were created uh, last month. Uh, why didn't retail move more? Or is that just normal? Well, you could call it the holiday hangover. I think people tend to tighten up on their budgets a little bit normally in any kind of environment in January and February because people are getting the credit card bills from what they spent over the holidays. They get the bills and the bills are due, so people tend not to spend money. Also, people are usually waiting for their refund checks. People start to file their taxes in these first couple months before April 15th. And so once they get those refund checks, then you might see numbers pick up again in the spring and into the summer. So I don't think it's disastrous. I don't think it's disastrous at all. All consumer confidence is high, like you pointed out. And the market looks good. The market looks strong. People are at work. I don't see any negative reason to get upset about it. It's just the typical time of the year. It's cyclical. When we look, Melissa, at the largest retailers in, in the, the world, um, and, and I, I may not have this right, but is it Walmart, the actual sort of brick and mortar place? And is it Amazon, the online uh, biggest retailer? Taylor? I don't know exactly if Walmart is the biggest brick and mortar, but I know that Walmart's stock didn't do so well in their last earnings report for this first quarter, although they really are one of the strongest retailers out there right now to compete against Amazon. But even Walmart isn't doing as well against Amazon. I don't know if they're the biggest one or not, because we don't, don't forget you have Target, too. Target has the brick and mortar stores, too. And Target stock is you know competing against Walmart all the time for also in-store people. How do they get the people through the gate? When you get people to come out and go and shop in store, you tend to have them spend more. But Amazon has done such a great job getting people and getting their things right away. It's free shipping, this and that, next day shipping. And Walmart and Target haven't been able to compete with those. And I don't know if they're going to be able to compete with those. And that is the problem. Amazon is definitely the king, the queen of everything online. And I don't know how anyone can compete with them in the future. They're really go, uh, just growing by leaps and bounds. I got a call in my, I was driving home last night and the, I got a call from the guy at our apartment. He says, there's Amazon for you. And I'm thinking, well, why do you need to tell me? Well, it was food that it was being delivered, uh, delivering wow. food now. So it's, it's really, they're, they're doing just a bang up job. Well, uh, you mentioned Target there, Melissa. And uh, I think Target is either the number three or four uh, toy uh, uh, retailer also, which brings us to, to uh, four, I'm told, uh, that uh, brings us to Toys R Us closing down. Uh, and, you know, I, I was a little bit dismayed by the CEO who uh, blamed it all on Amazon and, and blamed it on the digital age because uh, it, it's my recollection that uh, Toys R Us has had a heck of a problem for a number of years, a, a, lot, of a lot of debt. Uh, what do you make of it? There are classic example of mismanagement and one of the reasons that they're that they're going under is mismanagement because you're right they've had debt for a number of years and not only that they've had significant debt they've had a lot of debt since 2005 they went private at that point i think it was six billion and even last year when they filed for bankruptcy september 2017 and they were trying to save it they were trying to save it. They really didn't even do enough to save it between September and now when they've just shut down or decided to shut down. They still had $5 billion in debt last year. And when you've got that much debt, it was costing them $400 million a year just to service that debt. They weren't getting ahead. And that was, again, more than 10 years since, since 2005, since they initially went private. So it's really mismanagement. They, they weren't doing enough sales. They weren't getting people in the store. They weren't competing online against Amazon. Amazon's been around for a long time. That's true. But when you look overall, they had enough time to try to pay down more of that debt. 
and they are closed some stores before they had to go under completely and they just didn't do it. I think it was really poor mismanagement and it is sad because if you, if, if, you're, if you remember Toys R Us used to be big. Toys R Us and Babies R Us and when you were a kid and you go and shop in the stores and they had everything, everything you'd ever want, every Barbie dress, every Barbie doll. That was the one place you could go. They had everything. It's true you can go shopping at Target and stuff but they don't always have every toy that you want. And so that was the nice thing about Toys R Us. They had a lot of inventory, and now they're going to be gone. They had every Barbie dress I ever wanted, Melissa. Uh, <laughs> hey, let me ask you, though, about <laughs> Lego, Hasbro, Mattel, Fisher-Price. How are those companies doing? Well, all in all, Hasbro looks the best of any of them. Mattel doesn't look so good. It's in a downtrend. That stock has been falling, falling for a while, so I don't know what's going to happen with them. Hasbro, though, is trying to hold. That looks the best of any of the toy companies. So we'll have to see. I think 2018 is a good year for companies, even like Matt, that's in a downtrend to try to turn around because of the corporate tax cut savings. They've got a chance now to put some more money and meat and potatoes into their companies to grow it and expand and try to turn themselves around. And Hasbro could make a new high this year. I don't know. They're hovering, 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 but with a strong market. Hasbro could make new highs again sometime in the next 12 to 24 months. Matt has got a lot of work to do yet. That isn't a downtrend, but this this is a big year. This is a year to do it. And do you, uh, you, you said, you know, good economy. What, what's your outlook uh, sort of briefly for, for this year for retail? For retail, I would say the retail has had kind of a strong start to the year overall with the market, but typically retail doesn't end up performing until the end of the year because we talked about this last year, Black Friday with holiday sales, but I would say retail, some retails have had a good start to this year. Overall, I think retail is going to have a better year in 2018 with consumer confidence high and people back to work and they have more money in their pockets with the tax cuts, but they still have to have good management. They still have to get the people in the door and they still have to compete with Amazon, which again, I don't think anybody really knows how to do that well. Melissa Armo, founder of The Stock Swoosh, thanks for your time. As always, have a great weekend. It's always delightful you to too. have you on the program. Thanks. Have a good weekend.